Hello, this is George from Digital High Road. Today's video subject is having a job versus working for yourself. The one I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking at and analyzing what it's like to be the owner of Digital High Road, a YouTube channel using internet marketing and then having a job. We're going to look at three different sides of this whole thing, personal side, relationship side, and a satisfaction or job satisfaction side of it. So let's move on into, we're going to look at this funnel first to start with today. So I guess the first thing you look at when you're looking at having a job versus working for yourself is that you have to look at some realities of what we were talking about and how this would affect your personal life and what you are used to doing. Let's say if you have a job and things, the way they'll change if you become an entrepreneur. So let's look at first about you having a job. So let's say you have a job. I'm just going to use this as a general example. This is Apex Manufacturing. Now you may not be in manufacturing. You may be in medical. You may be a construction worker. You may be a utility worker. You may be a lawyer. You may be a college professor. You may be a dental worker. You may be a delivery person. Whatever your job is, you work for a company. So this is your company here. Now, each company probably has, depending on the size of the company, they usually have like a sales force because you're selling some kind of product, whether it be a manufactured product or setting up a website or hooking up new TV subscriptions, setting up a satellite dish for someone for television, uh, setting up internet service, uh, being a home nurse, visiting a patient, whatever it might be that you do, there's a sales force that actually creates and sets up appointments for people to sell products because you have to sell something or move something. The next thing is you probably have what we call an HR, human relations, or an office personnel. People that work in an office and keep track of all the inner workings of the office, like the accounting, like I said, human relations, the HR department, setting up new employees, interviewing, stuff like that. Then you have the product that you've created. Let's say if it's a factory, you have the shipping distribution. Or if you're selling widgets or you're selling new sites or whatever, you have someone that follows up and actually delivers the product, the good, the service. Then you have the person that actually produces the product, the good, the service. Like in a factory, a person producing widgets or building a new car or building a solar panel or whatever it might be. Each company has this. Now, any one of these could be you. But what you do is you come to work every day and you have been hired for X number of hours per week and you get paid so much for showing up per week and doing your work. And then as that goes, there'll be other things that come along with the job, such as you have a schedule and you abide by it. You were usually hired for a, a set amount of time that you needed to be there. You know what you can do for getting vacation time, um, time off. You are probably going to be involved in a health insurance program of some sort. You also have a retirement fund of some sort where you, the company contributes Apex Manufacturing, contributes X number of dollars per pay period to your retirement fund if you contribute another percentage to your retirement fund by yourself. You also may have, in the United States, you'll have deductions coming out of your paycheck, such as you'll be looking for your retirement fund or what we call in the United States as Social Security. You'll be paying around a 7.65% that breaks down between Medicare payment and Social Security tax. Put them together, 7.65% of your income is being taken out by the payroll department to be sent to the government every week to go into that fund for you. Now, what you're also going to be doing is you're going to be gaining or earning or what we call in business accruing vacation days or days off that you'll be eligible for depending on the amount of service you've put in to the company. So those are normal types of things that people look at as what they call bennies, benefits for having a job. 
Now, let's flip it over to what it's like having a business of your own. Now, in my situation, I'm semi-retired. I'm on Social Security income that I worked and paid into for years. But what I also am is an entrepreneur. I have a YouTube channel called Digital High Road. That's where you are right now. You're watching one of my videos. Now, for me to get to that point, I had to learn a lot of skills. Okay, I had to learn how to make a video. I had to learn about video equipment. I had to learn about lighting. I had to learn about editing videos. I had to learn about how to do research and keyword research and blah, blah, blah. The list goes on, just as some examples. Now, what I'm responsible for also is I'm also responsible for building funnels, which are sales funnels, which are part of promotions to create leads and sales to leads to purchase, which leads to personal income for myself. That's what I'm trying to do. Over here, because I showed up for my job and did what was assigned to me for my job, I received an income each week. Over here, I have a lot of things I have to do to create. I had to learn new skills. I had to do things daily. It's a grind. Yes, it's a daily thing I have to work on. Failing forward, if you will. And as they say, success gets no days off. Every day I try to do something to help my business grow. So what I'm doing also is I had to learn to create the videos. Like I mentioned, I had to create building funnels. I had to learn that. Also down here, the next thing, another leg, I had to learn how to market. I had to market for leads. I had to develop leads. How did I do that? Well, I had to learn to write emails. I had to work on planning out promotions and how to set up a promotion. Another thing I had to do is I have to, at the same time, I'm always working on developing traffic. What's that involved? Well, that you drive traffic and getting more traffic by creating ad campaigns. You get more traffic, which is where my main work right now in my first two years of Digital High Road has been working on getting SEO to drive free traffic and leads to my channel here, Digital High Road. So I'm working on getting free traffic. The other thing is I have to do is social marketing, what I can do to promote my business ethically and morally and legally. I work on that every day as well. So all these skills come into being and work every day because creating content, creating videos, working on these, my day gets split up between all this, is all to create one final thing, is to create leads, which lead to people putting and sell, buying products in the carts and making purchases, which leads to adding to cart. Also, I get their email address, so I have it to market the ad campaigns to and email marketing, writing campaigns. These promotions get sent out to the list that comes in from people buying these products or showing interest in that or interest in bonuses, whatever it may be I'm getting email addresses from. But the bottom line is I have to create income. That's the thing right there. I do all this to create income. And you do whatever you do for your job to create income. So that's the first part of explaining the difference between having a job versus working for yourself. Let's look at some financial differences. Okay, if you have a job, you have, like we talked a little bit earlier, you have a schedule, you abide by it. You're usually hired for a set amount of time that you'll be needed by the company to be there. You can count on how much you're being paid as the income that is there to be used for living expenses. You have a steady, what we call a steady income. You have health insurance coverage for you and your family, which is being paid for by the company as part of a benefit package. You have a retirement fund where you're putting in some funds. If the company, if you do, the company will contribute a percentage to towards monies that can't be touched then, but will be touched later when you get close to retirement age. 
the United States, you pay your share of Social Security tax and what we call Medicare, which is the mandatory health insurance. At age 65 in the United States, everyone has to go on Medicare. Then, as I said, you mentioned earlier, I mentioned about accruing or gaining or earning vacation time and days off according to employers' guidelines they have set up. Now, that's what I did with my company when I was delivering bread here to the bread route was what I had to do was I had income created each week from selling in product to accounts. The difference between what fresh that I brought in and stale that I brought out was the difference that I was paid a commission, a percentage of commission on. So my income was never steady. It varied from week to week. As that happened, I had to look at my income being a general overall sum of money that divided out over 12 months. I would count on being there as long as I did the work. And as long as I sold a product in, as long as I maintained the difference between fresh and stale products, I had to pay out. I didn't have vacation time accrued. There was no such thing. I could take as many vacations as I wanted depending on if I was willing to pay the $1,200 to $1,500 for the week for a substitute driver to do all my work that week so I could take the time off. If I was willing to do that and basically give up most of my profits for the week, after my expenses, it was always all of my profits for the route that week, then I could take that time off. So it was built into my wife's and my income picture we would plan in two weeks in the year that I was doesn't have that income coming in. It was going directly to pay someone so I could have some time off. Now special time off, I didn't have something where I had accrued sick time or vacation time that I could take if I wanted to. I had to show up. If I didn't show up at the dock to load my truck and service my accounts, I would have violations of my contract written up by a terminal manager. And I'd have a supervisor oversaw my operations that would write me up as well. So that's kind of some differences. The way in, family, days off, all that stuff. There's a lot of differences between stability of a job and being an entrepreneur. But the trade-offs for me was that I usually didn't have a boss to answer to day in, day out. I was free to run my route as I wanted to. I could order the products I wanted to, the quantity of products I wanted to, the selection of products I wanted to, as long as everything worked out well with the relationship I had built with store management at each of the accounts, whether they were small accounts like gas, small gas stations like Stop and Goes, trying to think of some names, that, you know, the ones that you have in your market uh, like Wawa's in Pennsylvania, Turkey Hills, those kind of accounts. Those were smaller accounts. I went from larger accounts, major accounts like a BJ's, a Walmart, a Wegman store, a Top store. It'd be like Publix, Kroger's, Safeways, Albert's, stores like that, depending on where you are. That was the kind of accounts I covered. So that's kind of some differences there. So you see what was involved with having a business of my own. That bread route was like a job that I purchased, actually. The demands that were on me all the time, the lower pay, all that. Now, the thing is, the reason I got involved in internet marketing is because the rewards are much greater. I worked, I know how to work hard. I did that on the route for 17 years. But now I'm in internet marketing. What I want to take a look at is we'll look at how the sales pages of these products that you end up buying are looking and bringing you into the world of internet marketing, maybe sometimes in a skewered way, a way that gets your mindset off center, shouldn't be, your mindset isn't where it should be, I guess. So let's take a look at that next. I want to analyze a sales page and get you thinking about what you're looking at when the sales page is presented to you versus the truth of what it takes to build an internet marketing business. So you see the difference between having a job and being an entrepreneur is often used in the sales pages today where they are selling you a laptop lifestyle. You're the 
Billy Darte's lunch says the frustrated and confused newbie. That's who I'm talking to, too. But he wants to let you know that if your job sucks, if your job is something you don't like doing day in, day out, week in, week out, that there's pros and cons that you can become an overnight sensation by buying products like his. Now, there's no truth in that except the fact that the thing that separates Billy Dar from you is a lot of hard work. And then for him, it's looking at the moral dilemma of how do you do business and do it the way you want to do it. Well, he has chosen one way to do it. I've chosen another way to do business. So whether, who's right or wrong, that's not for me to decide. What I'm trying to do is show you and get you to thinking about what the differences are between being employed and being self-employed. There are pros and cons and differences from country to country. Things I've shared with you in today's video are things that have to do with the United States of America. And I live in the state of New York. What I know firsthand is to be true for those situations may not be your situation whatsoever. I do know, however, that the universal truth is that people don't like working for the man and they get tired of being told what to do, when to do, and how to do it. They get tired of looking over their shoulder. They want to be their own boss. They want to be able to provide security for their family and financial security as well. They know that their job isn't getting them there. It's day in, day out for a set amount of money. How long do you have to work to get a pay raise? Well, when I'm self-employed here, it, it's just me putting in some more work, building my business to another level, and the income will follow if I build it properly. For you at your job, it depends maybe on office politics and who likes you, who doesn't like you, who thinks you're ready to advance to another position, who thinks that maybe you're a scumbag, maybe you don't belong there, maybe they don't like you. So what's, what's the best part of the balance between the two worlds? Well, it's going to have to be something you decide on. Do you want to become of an internet marketing world or do you want to remain where you are? The thing that I know from having built my business for almost two years now is that the difference between me and someone else with the success of my YouTube page is simply how much work has been put into the YouTube page. How successful is my YouTube page? How much work have I put in? Do I deserve to have a bigger business? If I do, it'll show up because it'll show in the work I've put in. It'll show in the amount of subscribers, the amount of views. All that will show. It tells on me. It's a telling thing. Some people don't like to face that. There are pros and cons. There's a mindset. You will have to change how you receive your income. You will have to change and become more susceptible to making yourself responsive to yourself, not sitting in procrastinating, not sitting in frustration, not being led to believe that there's the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. It probably isn't. You have to be able to put in the work that will make you building your business worthwhile to you. No one else can do that for you. And so that's the difference between having a job of your own and having a business of your own working for yourself. Okay, so in summary, from everything I've been talking about in today's having a job versus working for yourself is that is the amount of work and effort and skill set that you need to develop an online business such as such as a YouTube channel or you can have a blog or a website, is the work that's required to do that, are you enough of a self-starter? Can you trust yourself to do what you need to do? Or are you better off keeping your job?
whatever that job is in this for a company, for a government agency, for a, you know, whatever your situation is, is that, is that good enough for you? Is that going to support your family? Is it going to help you get your dreams? Or are you willing to face this, this whole thing here? If you are willing to face this thing, whole thing here, then I've got some free training to help you get started. Click the link down in the description for a 12-step plan. It's free, free for you today. Access that today and get started. Become focused and build a business that you would be proud of. But if it isn't, if you decided that your job is just fine and it handles everything you want out of life right now, then stay with your job. And I want to thank you for watching today. Now, if you did get some value from this video, please give me a thumbs up. Like the video. If you're new to our channel and have never subscribed, please subscribe to our channel. Reach over there and tap the bell icon as well so I notify you every time I publish a new video. I want to thank you for watching today. We appreciate you. If you are a subscriber, thank you. If you liked the video, thank you again very much for that. YouTube appreciates that, and I appreciate that as well. Thank you for watching today. God bless. Talk to you later.